is no excuse for rape. If you rape a child, if you rape somebody's sister, somebody's friend, somebody's mom, you are a beast. There's no excuse like she wore, um, she was wearing a short dress. Um, I was drunk. Um, I don't know what I was thinking. There's literally no excuse for rape. If you commit that atrocity towards somebody else, you should be punished for that. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. How are you guys doing? Today I'm going to be talking about um, a very uh, serious topic and it's rape. Don't panic. Um, if you're watching this video, I've never been raped in my life, but I've had four attempts of rape before. Yeah, I know. I, my family that are watching this video, they'll be quite terrified. Like, whoa, she has never ever spoken about this. Yes. And I guess I'm not the only one who has gone through stuff like this and, you know, kept it inside me and never voiced it out to a soul. This is my platform. I decided to use it, uh, you know, to voice out my thoughts, to, you know, encourage anyone out there who has ever been raped or, you know, has just even gone through the trauma of somebody trying to force themselves on her your voice is important speak your truth own up to your truth t tell your story somebody out there is ready to hear it so yeah like i said i've had four attempts of rape um first one you know they always claimed somebody he claimed uh, he was out of love and stuff like that second one that's the main story i'm recounting today was the brute like really it was brutal like i don't think i'll ever forget that experience the third one was some story about being drunk and stuff like that the fourth uh attempt of rape was it actually irks my soul because i don't want to get into the details you know but it irks my soul that you know online that's on facebook people look at this person to you know be um but a positive and influential person, so I'm like a role model to youths and stuff like that, you know. So the fourth attempt was, you know, CEO when you're looking for a job and they just feel that they can take advantage of you because they have maybe some opportunity to help you with that job. So yeah, that aside, um, let me talk about the, the, I was with my cousin, my dear cousin, I was with her when this happened. So yeah um i was in high school let's just say i was a trouble like i gave my parents a hard time when i was in high school so I, I don't quite remember what i did but i got in trouble and i was suspended so i was uh, i was sent home and i was at my aunt's place because i went to school in another town my parents didn't live in that town bottom line so yeah i went to my aunt's place i had to go spend time at home because i was suspended i couldn't attend classes i was in boarding school if that makes sense so yeah so while at home you know i'm bored there's nothing to do i had this friend he was the dj of uh, a club i forgot what what i forgot the name of the club but that's that's not important um so we are chatting i said oh you, you, uh, what are you doing today i'm like mm, i'm just at home and stuff like that he's like okay you, you can come you can come uh, and chill at the club tonight and stuff i'm like oh I can, can I come with my cousin, my elder cousin? He's like, yeah, fine, I know your cousin, I know your cousin, so yeah, come wherever you want. I'm like, cool. That night, I, uh, my cousin and I, you know, every we have dinner with my aunts and my cousins, the entire family, everybody goes to bed. My elder cousin and I, we sneak out and we go to the club. It's awesome, we are dancing, there's drinks, everybody is happy, but at some point, I, it was so hot, and I wanted to step out of the club, you know, to just get some fresh air. I tell my cousin I'm stepping outside of the back just in like two minutes or so. She's like, okay. So um, on my way out, I meet um this this uh, this guy. He he was he was a secret heart student as well. I don't know what he was doing out of school, but I knew him. I think so. We are just chatting up, you know. And then I don't know what happened. Bottom line, but. For some reason we separated like just a short distance i think i went ahead something like that the next thing i remember is um somebody stopping me you know just trying like trying to talk to me dolly ha trust me guys i've grown so much i used to be a snob like big snob i turned i'm like what you know uh like can i just talk to you i'm like no 
oh sorry what 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 do you want to talk to me about the next thing i remember is a knife um at my side like shut up i want to talk to you listen to me whoa when i feel the knife i'm like oh my god what's what's going on like he's like don't shake if you shake i'm stabbing you i'm like okay okay um i turn you know to try to look for the uh, the the guy the secret has stood there and i was talking with and so he's there's another guy also with a knife pointing a knife at him i don't even know what's going there but bottom line this guy who is pointing a knife at me tells me to just keep walking let's go out i go out i'm like okay what do you want do you want money what do you, i don't have any money i was a student that i was broke <laughs> um i don't have any money he's like no i don't want um money you're going home with me i'm like what going home with you where how, how? he's like shut up and stop talking we are leaving this place now you're going home with me i like you i wanted to talk to you and be all snobbish you know I was like, oh my god, I was like, oh my god, I'm so sorry, I didn't mean to be snobby. I started pleading and begging, he's like, no, sorry, you're going home with me now. Oh my god, that's when you, I, it dawned on me, like, oh my god, this is getting real, like, what is happening here, who is this guy, and stuff like that. Strangely, we go out, he stopped, there were only bikes, there were, there were, there were no taxis, there were a lot of uh, bike riders, you know, at outside of the club, waiting for, um, people who came the people clubbing to come out you know so we step out he stops the bike and tells the bike to take us that's when i realized oh my god this is happening like this is really happening if i don't you know cause a scene i don't know what's going to happen to me i start screaming crying i go on the ground i'm crying and stuff like that he's like he doesn't care the drama the scene i'm trying to cause here he's whatever it takes to get me out of here he will pull me drag me whatever it takes we are leaving this place together I'm not understanding what's going on. I start screaming like, I don't know this guy. I don't know you. How do you want me to go with you? I don't know you. I've never seen you before. Like, what? I don't even know your name. Nobody's paying attention to what is going on. The bike, the bike rider is very chilled out, look, watching us. It was later on that I understood that, they are, that those bike riders or those who work out of the club, they are so tired of those scenes, you know, boyfriend, girlfriend, who comes to the club and the guy, and you know, something happens in the club. Maybe the boyfriend is jealous because some guy was dancing with his girlfriend and you know, they are causing a scene so they don't intervene in boyfriend, girlfriend, wahala, bottom line. Oh my God. I'm screaming, I'm crying. He starts pulling me. Some of the scars I'm trying to treat today is because of that particular day. He starts pulling me everything. If I don't get up and start walking, he's going to pull me. I'm screaming, crying. He carries me, puts me on that bike, gets on the bike and tells the bike rider, let's go. Holy moly. I'm like, what? How? Go. I'm crying my eyes out and everything. The bike rider kicks off and starts going. I'm crying. I'm like, oh my God, Jesus Lord, I will never go clubbing again. I will never be a bad child again. I will never disobey my parents again. Oh Lord, who sent me to come clubbing? Like, Jesus Christ, please don't punish me this way. No matter. He's like, shut up. Stop talking. Shut the fuck up. Oh my God. I'm crying and screaming. At some point, the bike rider is like, wait, am I serious? I don't know. I don't know this guy. I'm like, yes, I don't know this guy. That's what I've been crying. I say, I don't know him. I was coming outside to get some air and he just pointed uh, a knife at me and threatened me. I, oh, the bike rider was like, oh, oh my God. No, that he can't take us to this guy's house. The guy now starts threatening the, the bike rider like, shut up and keep driving. I have to, I, the, your work here is to take us home and I'll pay you and that's it. Don't intervene. What's happening? I'm like, please, I'm begging you in the name of God. Please don't take me with, with it to this guy's house. I don't know who he is and stuff like that. Let me tell you guys something. I, I just, I just know in my heart that God loves, I, God loves more than every other person in this world. Here is the miracle that happens throughout this scenario. We, we, we have gone like a long way. I'm crying, I've given up, I know, okay, this is the end of it, I don't know what this guy is going to do to me, he's going to kill me, rape me, whatever is happening here, I don't know, because the guy, when, on our way, as I'm crying, you know, he's like, shut up, when we get home, I shouldn't be crying at this point, what is, what is awaiting me is going to be worse, like, he's not going to have any peace of me, I was trying to cause a scene, and make people, and draw attention to what was happening, am I mad, do I know who he is, and stuff like that, let's get home, he will show me, like, what I've never seen before. Oh my god sweet baby jesus i was like wow at some from nowhere this is this is where the 
miracle thing happens happens from nowhere i'm crying the bike driver is scared so he's, he keeps going from nowhere about 20 to 25 bike riders they are coming you know shouting behind us like stop 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 oh my god the bike the bike rider carrying us stops at some point and like 20 25 bike riders they surround us like wait a minute that they just want to be clear about one thing that they are from the club they saw what was going on but they didn't want to interfere but they just, they just want to be sure that you know because they know this guy they know what he's up to oh my god i'm like thank you oh my god what i don't know this guy i've never seen him please you guys should just my sister i left my sister in the club i start screaming and begging and then one of the, the bike drivers comes down and tells me to come down from the bike the guy with the knife is like don't shake from here i don't know what to do and stuff like that like they don't want to, they don't want to have any issues with him they know that he's a dangerous person but if it comes to it all of them here they would fight him and i don't quite remember what happens but he steps down and i come down i am crying and everything and he starts you know there's a confrontation between him and the bike riders like uh do you guys know who i am do you know who do you know do you have you guys heard of amen Muna, he starts speaking in pidgin pidgin is a language that's spoken in cameroon like Muna, the crazy for Muna, head there Muna, know who i be i go show Muna all oh, one by one this and that he starts really threatening and stuff like that oh my god the bike drivers just told me to get on one of the bikes that taking me back to the club I have never ever been more grateful to God than I was on that day. I don't know what, like, a, a couple of about 10 15 bike riders left with me. I don't know what happened. I don't even want to know. I don't care. Please, we left and we got and we went back to the club. Apparently, now people were aware of what had happened. So, everybody was outside. My cousin was crying. She was looking for me. What is she going to explain? They are going to kill her. They would kill her. So she was crying, I get there, I'm, I've been crying so much that my, my, I'm bleeding on my legs because the guy had been dragging me. So I get there, everyone is so relieved, the DJ is pissed off with, with me, the, the DJ friend took us there is pissed off like, who told you to even go out of the club, this place is a dangerous place and everything. The sacred heart boy I was chatting with, they had taken his phone, all the money on him, all the jewelry and stuff like that, oh my god. It was when I get to the club that I get to ask her, who is this guy that was pointing a knife at me and everything? The story I hear, it was this guy, his name was Ahmed. He had this guy, Not he's not only a red, he lives in some, you know, very, very dangerous and renowned um, uh, part of the town called Old Town. All the atrocities in Bamenda, Bamenda is a uh, uh, region in Cameroon, happens in that, in that part. They tell me Ahmed, Ahmed had actually stabbed a fellow lessons elder brother who came to Cameroon on vacation. I'm a, like my an ex student. Like he had, he's a murderer. He's not only a rapist, he's a murderer. He does the worst things. No matter how many times they lock him up, he still gets out of jail, you know. So I was like, oh my god. So everyone was like, if you had gone with this guy, truth be told, you would have either been found dead and abandoned somewhere or he would have raped the hell out of you like you would have never been the same person i'm like what i'm crying i'm really really crying profusely my cousin is like you know what let's just get out of this place strangely again the same bike uh, people when it's time to leave that like it's okay that this army guy he is very very vicious for some strange reason when he wants something he does everything he can to get it we are taking you home I'm like, oh my god. I start thanking them. My cousin is grateful. About 15 of them, of them again, they, take, they, they, they took my cousin and I and they brought us home. Stood there, they were like, go and enter in your house and lock the door. Never ever go out to dangerous places when you're just with a girl or you go out and you're by yourself, you're going out to get fresh air. No, it does not happen like that around, around that club. I was so grateful to those people. Since that day, if you're African, you know the story. Bike riders, they are some of the most rude people that have ever existed in this world. Like, they are so pompous. When you dress nicely and pass by them, they make all the comments that will just drive you crazy. But since then, I have never ever disrespected a bike rider in my life. Like, I respect those. No matter how arrogant you are to me, I'm like, I just ignore you and I go. Because I've never forgotten what those people did to me. 
like seriously so yeah that that is the most remarkable rape attempt i don't even know what to call it i don't know what i don't even know if i would have been sitting here today i don't know if i would have been the same person i don't know if i would have been dead you know so yeah i just wanted to share this story with you guys if you guys remember in my um a letter to my younger self i said something like don't be too anxious to live life go clubbing and stuff yeah if i could go back i'll go clubbing only when i get to uni like even at that i'll be very careful so yeah that's my story guys when it comes to rape and you know feel like, i would encourage any victim out there you know who has suffocated their story kept that story to themselves to voice it out to talk to somebody it relieves you it just take off that burden from you it's not yours to carry you know and uh, most importantly pray to god you know let god deal with the, the beast that did whatever thing they did to you and i pray your life is you know better and you forget about that experience so yeah that's the topic i wanted to chat about today i hope you guys enjoyed watching this video if you have not subscribed to my channel i told you guys i've had the i've had my fair share of experiences in this life this is one of them uh, the more i feel comfortable to talk about them i sure will so yeah click that subscribe button join the family let's grow to a thousand plus and why not let's grow the family even bigger see you guys in my next video bye